Hey there, boys and girls. It's Ralph Garman, and you're listening to Talking Cod Swallop. Good choice. Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Man. You might know me from the Tell Him Steve Day podcast and the I Sell Comics podcast. Listen, I love podcasting. I love talking, but what I really love doing is talking Cod Swallop. Hey, I'm Alicia Witt. I'm Daniel Portman from Game of Thrones. I play Podrick Payne. I'm Ellipses, and you're listening to the talking... Okay. <laughs> I'm Mark Bernard, and you're listening to the Talking Cod Swallop Podcast. Hey, man, it's Kevin Smith, Silent Bob, whose voice you were never used to hearing in the 90s until I started opening it up, man. And that's because I'm a podcaster, and you're listening to a podcast, Talking Cod Swallop, right here, man. To this week's talking cod swallop or is it a celluloid cod swallop i am Gemma. i'm james and i'm gabrielle yay there's three of us on the call and, I'm I, I, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I am super excited to be recording this episode because it is finally the episode where we're able to talk about one division <laughs> <Yes>. spoilers ahead <laughs> Yes, there definitely will be spoilers on this episode. We are doing a no holes barred episode and review of this program. So if you haven't watched it yet, please note that. Yeah. (laughs) Tune out now. Yeah. (laughs) Come back later. Yeah, come back later, definitely. And also, what's taking you so long? So, (laughs) right. So, should we just jump straight into it then? Because I don't normally do celluloid cod swallops. So as James is just sitting back and chilling out with this episode, it is normally his baby. So I should really be handing it over to him. But he doesn't seem to be wanting to. So come on, James. Yeah. I detect well, some fear there, Gemma. I detect some fear. It, yes, there is an element of fear. The fear is I feel I have a limited amount of knowledge on this one. But to give an idea of what One Division was and is, it's a spin off predominantly from the the Marvel run of films, isn't it, that have been from the Avengers series. And when I first heard about this, I just got interested in it because I saw trailers to it where I was like, what the hell is this? It looks like old, you know, really sort of old style 1960s or uh, around that period sitcoms and other stuff like the 80s. And my knowledge of the Marvel films is not, wonderful but my knowledge of it was obviously spoilers ladies and gentlemen uh, and you know salty tadpoles whatever we're going to call you on this one the vision character had died in the the last avengers film so you're kind of looking at this thinking well how is this character back in this world but wait a minute why are we looking at a world that isn't even focused on the avengers universe and looks like tv shows Mm-hmm. And it was just, that was where my knowledge came from of it. I was like, this just looks so damn weird. I've got to see what this is. So I'm interested to see how, you know, you two got into to watching this and what your interest in it was. I think with me as well, because me and you had a conversation before it even started. Didn't did. we? I think we even had it on mic. I can't remember. But, you know, we have so many conversations, <laughs> whether it's on mic or not. But um <laughs> They blur into one, yeah. They do, yeah, definitely. Uh, with regards to One Division, I, you know, I've always liked the two characters. So, you know, like I, I don't know the background, like from a comics point of view. I only know from the cinematic. <laughs> um, I've got a rule in life that I can't read comics because I'm a collector and I won't stop. So I have to not allow myself to read them. And you don't stop. From start till you get enough. <laughs> so yeah, I I can't actually read the comics because otherwise I'm just gonna I know that I'm gonna get myself into millions of debt because I'm gonna have to have everything. <laughs> yeah, so I always like the characters on the actual films and everything. So and I thought, well, and it also looked really really weird and there was a lot of hype behind it. And normally with hype, I I'm, I'm like, oh, I can't be asked, you know. But with this one, I just couldn't work it out from the trailers what was going mm. to happen. 
So I was just like, oh, I have to watch this. And yeah, we were all on the same page with that, weren't we? So well, no, I, say, I love Marvel and all things Marvel. I'm definitely more a DC girl, though. Like, I'll not lie, I'm definitely more DC, but hmm. thinking of superheroes, just it's just amazing, you know, and I'm one of them weirdos who watches it and loves to look for Easter eggs. So anything Marvel related, I think I might watch it once, but then watch it for the Easter eggs and then watch it a second time just to make sure I've seen that Easter egg, if that makes sense. That's why I enjoy it more. It's like a bit of a mystery. Like, ooh, what does this mean? What does this mean? That's why I love it. And then my daughter mm. is like, is obsessed. Is obsessed with it. Like, literally obsessed. So I have to have shit to talk to her about because she's a teenager and all now. So I need to <laughs> have a common ground <laughs> now. Nice. So this was the this was the bonding moment, you know. <laughs> I, but I remember you asking that question. We commented about this on Facebook, and you said, "Did you get the Easter eggs?" And I'm going to be honest. I was like, uh, "No." <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud. I got so many first time round this time. Flipping first time ever. I was like, I seen it. I know, I know, I know. And then I had to be like, okay, maybe I didn't. And then my husband hadn't seen them at all by this point. So we then done a marathon of them all through a second time round. And I was like, yes, I seen it. I seen it. I was like, did you see it? I was like, did you see that? He's like, I saw it. But what does it mean? I'm like, oh, thank God. I get it. They don't. I'm a genius. (laughs) <laughs> well i look forward to getting into that in a bit definitely there was a lot of things that i saw in it that because uh, i've rewatched it just to kind of remind myself you know before we did this recording i only got up to five or six i can't remember exactly you know the second or third or fourth mm-hmm. time round, however long it is but there was a couple of things on the first second and third episode that i noticed that was tiny tiny little attention to details but I missed them the first time round mm-hmm. and it wasn't until I was watching it as a reviewer that I was like wait and it was even just as simple as um you know the fact that they put the lines up on the screen so they made it just like a little tv screen you know so that you had the black bars but for some reason I never noticed them until I actually was doing checking for the review <laughs> it was like ridiculous because I was like, oh. <laughs> and then as it went to like the 70s, it moved to the bottom, you know, and it's like, ooh. <laughs> they were very, they were very good with the attention to detail of the shows. I mean, right up until the Modern Family era in the last episodes where it was like you have them doing the commentary yeah. while this is going on. And I could just see Modern Family the whole time while they're like, I could just see Sophia Fergara sitting there doing the talk that she does while this is playing in the background. Do you know, mm-hmm. so it was very, it was very, very good with their attention to detail. I mean, even right down to Agatha and her leg warmers in the 80s, it was gr- or the 90s, it was great. I'm like, I'm, I'm living for all of this. <laughs> well, they, they really did put the effort in when it came to oh. trying to get the show to be period piece specific and right. Because certainly, like when yeah. I watched the first episode, I was looking, I think he got the, I got it wrong. So I was like, this is maybe a bit more like Bewitch, but the idea was that it was more like the Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah. And they actually got mm. Dick Van Dyke to work with them to give them advice on how to best do the show. Now that is showing attention to detail. Yeah. Oh. Came in as a I consultant mean, for them. Marvel, I will give them their credit. I, I talked about this on another podcast, but Marvel are amazing when it comes to attention to detail. I mean, even right down to, I think it was on Wanda's license plate as she drove in in her whatever car it was, I'm um, crap at cars, but it was whatever car it was on her license plate. In the American ones, they have like numbers on the registration yep. plate. The numbers are Stanley's date of birth. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. small, small things like that are just, you need to be smart to catch, you need to be like aware to catch them, but they're just so, they're brilliant. I mean, they're just absolutely class. And things that you think are Easter eggs aren't Easter eggs, but distracts you from an Easter egg that's going on around it. You're like, ah, that's so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> there was also one thing that I did, which was to get the tadpoles involved, was to ask them what their sort of fan theories were and also what their, you know, what their thoughts are on the program and whatnot as well. So there was a few people that shared that. So James is going to be giving us the honour of reading them so that nobody Mm -hmm. has to be put off by my awkward and horrible reading. (laughs) But there was one that I actually missed off, so I'll read that one first. The person that I missed off, sorry about this, (laughs) is my friend Serena Meckerite, 
I was waiting for someone else from the Marvel Universe to make an appearance. Glad it's tying up to Doctor Strange, my favourite series this year. And then I put Evan Peters with my favourite cameo, because he was. But we'll get into that later. And then she's also written, laugh out loud, she recast him, was the funniest line. <laughs> I like the the Doctor Strange link. And that's one of the things that I caught on to. I think I was telling you, I I, I caught on something at the end of it and I didn't want to tell you guys till the podcast because I wasn't sure if you had caught it or not. If you know what I mean? Might not so, so, yeah. Obviously, a lot of it was alluding to Doctor Strange appearing and there was the hope that Benedict Cumberbatch would appear in mm-hmm. the episode at some point. However, mm-hmm. in the last episode... I think I'm going to have to I'm gonna look at my notes here because I need to. Because I had them wrote down. <laughs> I was that bad about it, right? Agatha says in the last episode, right, she will be more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. Dr. Strange is the person who holds that title, right? He got that 2016, I think his film was or whatever, right? So there's the first link, Sorcerer Supreme. This is all in the final kicker. Then it says whenever he, at the end, when, you know, Wanda's doing the astral projecting reading of the book thing yep. that she's doing at the end. Yep, in the yep. film, in Doctor Strange in 2016, how was he learning his craft? He was in astral projection form, learning from that there. So there's that link as well. And then you'd probably need to watch it a second time. But the music that plays over that scene is the Doctor Strange music and theme song. But it's played at wow. a slower, darker tone. So oh. that's where that, I mean, I know there's all the links to Mephisto and all that stuff. That's fine. Like the fly and the devils on the cave and things. That's. There are many ones, but that to me was the most perfect, subtle, you needed to know what you were looking for to understand the link, but it brought Doctor Strange in nicely, if that made sense at all. Mm. <laughs> it did. Did any of you catch that? Did any of you catch that? Please say you did, and I'm not the only retentive one who caught that shit. <laughs> you uh, are the only retarded. Uh, retarded? Oh, my God. Oh, retarded. Ooh, harsh. Harsh. <laughs> do, do you want me... Okay, I'm going to ask the question. Do you want me to lie to you, or do you want... Uh... <laughs> well, I think before we jump... I want a nicer <laughs> response than what she just said. <laughs> I think I would like to um, apologise on microphone to say that I just made a mouthful of a wrong word there, and I did not mean to call you retarded at all. But basically, um, retentive was the word that I was going for, so I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, take it. I can get you out of this, Gemma. Just say Gemma done fucked up. Gemma done fucked up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. See, this is why I'm not allowed on celluloid pods while it very But no, I didn't notice that at all. But actually, yeah, when I when I go back and listen to it. That's going to be, you know, not listen, sorry, watch it again. That's going to be uh, some really interesting little snippets that you've provided. Yeah. So what did the Salted Tadpoles say, James? Well, let's let's go through them. So regarding their theories, we've got some very interesting ones, but we've also got some very long ones. So Tim Dawson said the following. OK, so my initial theory was that Wanda was in control of everything manipulating reality to cope with Vision's death in Endgame. However, the second I saw Agnes in episode one, I had a suspicion that she could be involved, and I thought Agnes could have been a couple of characters, including Mephisto, basically the devil in the comics, Agatha Agnes, who taught Wanda how to use her powers in the comics, or even an alternative universe version of Wanda. Mm, Interesting. Uh, After finishing this, I have to say, I can't wait for the future of the MCU. If they continue to give little nods to the past and the rich history of comics, I'll be a very happy cat. Also, if you have a spoilers section, ooh, should we go to that now, people? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. If you have a spoilers section, he's put one. He's glad Monica got her powers, hoping they put her in Captain Marvel 2. Uh, two, he's disappointed that Quicksilver wasn't real, as I thought they might have brought him in to help from an alternative universe with help from Doctor Strange to calm Wanda down. And it did make me laugh, so so he's not too bothered by that. His other uh, third point is Neo Vision. In the comics, he gets rebuilt at some point and becomes more robotic. Him and Wanda are married, and I think she leaves him, which I really liked as it brought an awkwardness to his character, almost like Data from Star Trek. 
Fourthly, he's put, he can't wait for the kids to come back. Billy became one of my favourite Young Avengers characters, Wiccan, uh, and as a couple of them have come into the movies now, I'm hoping they make the team. And number five, he's dis, and I, I agree with him on this. I am disappointed Deadpool didn't turn up just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been good. Yeah, he needs to take over the Stanley cameos big time, like even mm. just as a, I can't even talk about the Stanley cameos, I'll start crying. Oh my gosh. Now there are some good, good theories. Like, I mean, I agree with him on the Quicksilver thing, how Quicksilver was reduced to a, a boner joke. It was a bit shit, like, let's be honest. I did like that one. I am excited to see where the kids go as well. Like Wiccan, I think from what I recall in the comics, he is openly gay and he actually marries this is in the comics. So if any, I, again, weirdo, um, I think it's like a young Hulkling kind of character he marries, but this is like X-Men books, X-Men comics. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see that and what he can bring to it. But I like how it does link to X-Men, that franchise, which they've now just got. I did like how it brought that in in some way. I did like that. I mean, I really hope there was going to be a real crossover with X-Men, some sort of appearance of of one of their characters in it. Because obviously my understanding for uh, Quicksilver and uh, Wonder is they're Magneto's kids. Have I got that right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I know we watched. There'd be something there. Yeah. I know we watched, I watched an episode of X-Men last week. I had like a marathon of them all again. And it's the second time, I think it's in Dark phoenix maybe maybe dark phoenix or the one before i can't remember it's not first class it's one of the ones with the new younger cast anyway with sophie turner and that there but um who do you call them oh i've lost my total brain fart professor x uh the young professor x goes back to this house and they walk up the driveway and on the letterbox it says maximoff on it even though i sort of knew they were related it's the first time i personally have seen a link between wanda and quicksilver in mm-hmm. either a film or a com- of any sort till then obviously wandavision then done it directly a bit more bluntly a bit more in your face of a connection what you know very very clever i thought one theory i saw that never came to fruition and obviously someone created a fake screen cap is you're going to have magneto in it Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't be a Magneto in any shape or form we'd expected. They were showing that the theory was it was going to be, or the, the fake thing they put together, it was going to be Daniel Craig as Magneto, which I thought could have no! been quite interesting. But I thought it would no! be interesting. No! <laughs> yeah, I think Gabrielle doesn't like that. <laughs> no, not Daniel Craig as Magneto. Like, Daniel Craig just has... Oh, he just, oh, I don't know. My Nito just turns me on the fucking like crazy. He's like a normal guy that's been through so much shit that he has a lot of anger and resentment. And I can see that in Michael Fassbender and how he acts, and how he portrays it. But Daniel Craig, I just don't, I don't know. I just can't see it. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, don't just, shoot the messenger. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no. So, but then I'm all for giving them a chance. Like, he'd probably end up being absolutely fabulous. Like, I mean, everyone bitched it about James Stewart and Michael Fassbender playing the younger ones as well anyway. And they knocked it out of the park. Everyone always bitches about the new ones and they end up killing it. So as much as I personally, it's probably just because I have personally turned on by Michael Fassbender. That's probably why, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> um, Yeah, I would give him a crack at that. <laughs> <laughs> one thing See, that I did find really funny though was when Paul Bettany turned around on an interview. I can't remember what which one he was, which interviews are this came from, but uh, he made an announcement saying that he um, was really looking forward to. It. He was finally getting to work with someone that he's always wanted to work with, <laughs> and yeah. like on you know on the last episode, we find out. It's him. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's amazing that he made that joke, you know, that he sort of said, oh, well, you know, I've always wanted to work with myself. <laughs> well, yeah, he certainly got his wish, didn't he? Yeah. At least he didn't say, at least he, didn't say he wanted to play with himself. I mean, cause, I mean, that could have been a whole different sort of storyline. <laughs> he can play with himself if he wants. <laughs> <laughs> but, whatever um, makes him happy yeah exactly there was other times that and i made a comment on the facebook page i think it was that there was times when he kind of looked and resembled rick mel quite a lot in okay, especially when he is. was yeah. drop dead fred yes that's rick mail drop dead fred's rick mail 
Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. So, and then he was in a, a British comedy program called Bottom. Totally, like this is this is a totally mind fuck me there because like in my head I can't unsee it. <laughs> it was, you know, when he was like drunk with the the chewing gum. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, he's got so many expressions of Rick Mail on there. You know, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> I feel like we're jumping all over the place. Maybe we should do episode by episode by episode and uh, let the social chat <gasps> talk first. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Maggs said this may take a couple of replies and I'll try and leave it as a spoiler as f- spoiler free as possible so though and he's put hashtag warning may contain spoilers the first theory was because of comic knowledge I thought she'd had a psychotic break and it was all delusional I I had a very similar thought myself but I'll just say cutting back for a say about Colin my theory is probably going to not go down well with people I'm thinking more my co-hosts. Um, so, uh, because of co- uh, comic knowledge, and I thought she just had a psychotic break. It was all delusional. Then, with all these sword and Hydra references, she'd been captured by Hydra, had her psychotic break, and they were using this as a way to brainwash her, uh, using the sitcoms that she's created to implant their control, and sword were trying to break in and stop it. The second theory uh, that Colin had was that after her brother showed up, you know, brother in speech marks, I thought that she crossed into the multiverse and into the X-Men's universe where Vision was still alive and Quicksilver had been sent in to try and pull her out of her hex. And when he'd failed, either Professor X or Magneto were going to show up to shut her down, bringing the mutants into the MCU. Not bad. Good theories. Technically, she did have a bit of a break, though. That's what yeah. like, the whole thing was, though. So mm. they did stick true to that. It was the whole thing. This, the, it was her psychotic break that caused it. And OK, Agatha was causing all the fuck ups. But ultimately, it was her that, you know, she she snapped. She just mm. she just got lost in her own grief and conjured up a world where she didn't have to be a superhero, where she didn't have to deal with. I think we talked about this the other night with, Gem, with Joanne, Gemma. Where she got to be everything she never could be before the snap, before Thanos, before Vision died. She got to be the wife. She got to be the mother. She got to be everything normal. So she just snapped. Technically, that was right. But Agatha was was Agatha all along fucking it up. Yeah. <laughs> I did see from the start. I thought right, it's something like PTSD. This is their way of a coping strategy uh, of dealing with it. It's it it's this, the fact is that she. It, well, like you said, she didn't have the life she wanted. It had gone completely down the pan, and that was her way of basically dealing with it. I don't, I don't yeah. want to rush ahead with w- one of the things I wanted to say about it, though. Okay. On, on the way I sort of like viewed her as a character, and still sort of kind of do, which was probably I don't know how well people. Well, I'd be interested to see what people think of my views on what happened with her. But I, I mean, I stood, my my idea stood, you know, stood throughout that it was somebody who was basically cracked up was trying to hold it together in some form or another and that did for me a very sort of sad element to the show you know it yeah. she started out they were saying that if you watch it from the start and i'd not originally got this but the you know the previously on one division bits for the first few episodes it was her sounding quite happy and then as it went on she started to sound quite unhappy and depressed and mm-hmm. i thought that was a very interesting little touch they've done with it because you you basically see the train going off the tracks don't you as the as the show goes on i know this might get a bit deep but talking about the ptsd and stuff and i can honestly say as a woman with ptsd and it's not something that's spoke about a lot and i know marvel probably didn't have this in mind when they were doing but they might have done there might have been some subliminal way of acknowledging it but i didn't know i had ptsd initially when i went through a stage where i snapped and i was making decisions that were not safe for me they were not safe for other people Mm -hmm. They were not good. I to everyone on the outside. I'm not. I looked like I was living my best life. I was just making up for lost time. I was just doing things I never got to do before I settled down. I was just living. But to me, that was that was like I don't drink at all. Never have really. Right. And it's not that I did go out and start drinking. I started going and party. That was not me. I did not do that. But to people on the outside looking in, everything was great, which to me reflected a lot with Wanda in how she snapped and made everything Mm -hmm. perfect. And then. When I realized it took something extra traumatic, which is for me, the head injury, but for Wanda, mm-hmm. it was in, you know, having to lose vision again and her children again, which brought her back to normality and then dealing with the the actual emotions that she should have probably went through initially. 
So to me, I understand what you were saying. It's, it, it's sort of the way it was done. But to me, as someone who had that literal cycle, it was done perfectly. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. she had like the manic phase where she just didn't want to know. Mm-hmm. She wanted her best life, yeah. forgot everything negative. And then something bad happened, which made her check back to reality, which literally like I reflect and it resonates totally with me. And I'm sure it would resonate with a lot of people when it's put in that way. So it was good that you brought that up, James, in a way to to show that. Yeah. So, And it's I, true, I, you did see that the manic phases with the character, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely saw that. I had a slightly different thought at the very beginning, which was that I thought it was almost like it was all a dream or yeah. in her head kind of thing. Mm. So, yeah, at first it was almost like, you know, maybe we were going to find out that she had been captured by someone uh, or she was yeah. being tortured and she was like playing this through her head, just keeping herself sort of grounded, yeah. I suppose, is the best way. I thought that that might have been, especially when you had the the radio on episode two, where they were saying, mm. wonder who's doing this to you. I thought, oh, maybe that is actually yeah. what's going on then. Obviously, turned out that that wasn't wasn't quite right but it was in some ways because it is it kind of was in her head in a way because she has but she controlled everybody else's brains instead of just her own yeah yeah that was my first sort of thought that that might be actually the case but if you paid attention to the adverts that were showing during her show time you always saw hydra mentioned or i think in, i can't remember i'm gonna have to check my notes but there's a i think it was one of the first episodes there was like a link to mephisto and somehow, so I think because that negative element was there within a commercial, it sort of give it maybe one of these has to be controlling her. You know, it has it can't be her doing this because of those little snippets. But I think the part that made me go, Wanda's definitely doing this and she's not in control. And it might sound really silly, but do you remember the commercial about the spillage? And there was like it was like the one the one shit that was looking at the one shit advert. You know, we wipe it up and da 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 da. Yeah. The, the, the uh, the kitchen rule or whatever it was called it was called Lagos. Yeah. I think it was the tagline underneath it is for cleaning up mistakes that you didn't mean to make something like that. I can't mind what it was exactly. I'll have to check it, but something like that. Yeah. And if you go back to Captain America Civil War or Avengers Civil War, when Wanda makes that big mistake right at the beginning where she does save Captain America, but she causes the deaths of hundreds of people by blasting it accidentally into the building. Mm-hmm. Right. That was in a town called Lagos. Oh, yeah. Ah. So to me, that was then where I was like, oh, that's her. Th- she has like, that's her own guilt. That has to be her guilt. So that's probably where I started to think a bit more. It was her just because it was so uh, I can't even describe how it felt. But it was just that something. It was just her own guilt that came out of it, if that makes sense. But that was just mm-hmm. me. Everyone else probably thought it was. I don't know what everybody else thought it was. Probably just a one shit commercial. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked and thought, hey, weird adverts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you needed to pay attention to them commercials. Like they were dripping with Easter eggs, dripping. dripping. Yeah, it's like there was a there was a Stark Industries one, wasn't there, with the the toaster. Do you want me to tell you the one with the toaster? <laughs> Go on Do then. Me to tell you the toaster. In the toaster, there is a part where there's a flash in the toaster. Whatever happens, I can't mind what, but there's a flash in it, right? The rumor is around because it was it was done in the time frame of she watched that Dick Van Dyke show whenever her uh, was with her parents and stuff. That flash yes. is meant to resonate with the explosion that killed her parents. Oh. See? Interesting. Sorry, I'm really weird about this. <laughs> no, it's good. It all, it all interlinks. So, going on to our next salty tadpole, Hayley Marler has said, I don't really have many theories as such. I think it will lead into the new Doctor Strange film. I think you I think you think could be on something there, Hayley. Obviously, she's now become the Scarlet Witch, which is her proper character name. And Agnes is from the comic books, but I've never actually read them. I just watched the films. We think she was astro planing it at the very last bit like Doctor Strange does. Gabriel has said that to be true. Uh, Monica Rambeau now has her powers, so there's probably going to be a new film about her, or maybe another Captain Marvel. I don't know where White Vision will fit in. Maybe he'll become more conscious as he goes on. And maybe he'll be the new Iron Man. 
Um, but I'm getting carried away now. I now really have ideas as to where it might go from here. I don't have any fan theories as such, other than that Fight Pietro was basically Evan Peters' X-Men character for laughs. She made one of her kid's powers be super speed to try and emulate her brother, and the other kid might end up being the next Doctor Strange, because he could do magic stuff by thinking about it. Although I think Wanda and Vision do have kids in the comic book, but I don't know much about the actual comics. <laughs> <laughs> okay right okay okay uh yeah yeah very very true about the link to dr strange where his astral project and i think i mentioned that earlier on in relation to the kids ooh, in the comic books they do indeed have children but they are not wanda and vision's children they are wanda and mephisto's mephisto somehow i don't know how it all works like it's like the reverse upside down immaculate conception or something i don't know but in somehow basically the children are fond of the demon Mephisto, so they are, and yes, they do go on to become X Men of sorts, but they are they're unfortunately not Vision's children because he obviously can't sow a seed. But yeah, that's why the links to Mephisto are are heavily in that in One Division itself. I think with Mephisto, from what I recall, is actually a Doctor Strange villain. Also, don't quote me on that. I'm going to have to double check that one. But yeah, so that's that's the only thing. So yeah, they're not. And I agree. Evan Peters was a. They shouldn't have made him a joke. So the vision can't so see, but he can make a circuit board. Pretty yes. much. Yes, that's all he can really do. Yes, that's mm. it. Yeah, I was really hoping that it would. The the bringing in uh, Evan Peters from the X Men universe would have been like a really good push to, as I said earlier, bring the X Men into it. And I don't know, it seems like like you said, they just turned it into a joke, and it seems like a bit of a waste that they did that. Really. Yeah, I just find that's a very strange way of doing things. I was kind of hoping that for people to bring into the show, that we're going to maybe bring in somebody as, say, uh, Mr. Fantastic or somebody that we were totally, you know, to, to be the, the, the person they're going to have who'd sort of be able to solve everything. When all they seemed to then bring in was a weird contraption that could go on the surface of like Mars or something. That didn't really. <laughs> Yeah. Impressed yeah. me. <laughs> Thought he was running out of steam a bit there. Yeah, <laughs> mm, I agree. And Definitely. I couldn't also work out in the first episode. So John Brady's boss, the uh, the Vision's yes. boss. Why yes. did he never reappear? He was told that you know we had him for one episode. He was could have been quite an interesting bit of you know character. They moved him through time possibly to the different ways he interacted with him. I could never fathom why they just had him in that one and then gone. Not sure, but his wife appeared in quite a few others. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. I, I mean, know I where he went. Lo- yeah, I love the comic elements they ran with it in it. When it was sort of like being like a definitely the 50s Dick Van Dyke stuff. They did Bewitched with it. They definitely did do Bewitched. They got, definitely was yeah. sure on that one. And then they moved it into other things. I just thought it was very interesting to do that. And I also liked the Fuller House, or the sorry, Fuller House was the more recent one, but the Fuller House nod. Very mind that, you know, the whole Olsen link to that yeah, would be very interesting. Yeah, it was, it was quite funny, actually, because Elizabeth Olsen, they, a lot of people didn't actually realise that she yeah. was actually related to one of the Olsen, uh, Olsen, yeah. Olsen twins. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> yeah. My, my husband only found that out, like, during one of the, watching one of the vision there. I mean, he was like, what? I'm like, yeah, she clearly got the height. He got, she got the height gene, clearly. She yeah, did. She, she it, the height it must gene. be so weird for her because i mean she's now famous right yeah. but would she even know what that is given who her sisters were from they were six months old mm. she would she would know nothing else you know it must be so bizarre yeah you know oh, it must be weird some twins will be remembered but um elizabeth will be remembered as what wanda will just be like legendary so yeah and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how really how the Olsen twins remembered because now they've really sort of faded from the media spotlight. You, you know, they, they were obviously, I didn't know full house, so that was right over my head, but I do remember them being sort of all over the place when they were probably teenagers, I guess they were like yeah. being in films and whatever other stuff. I got those what else they did, but they're not really my, I'm not their demographic, am I? So um, they made their billions, not millions, they're oh, billions. Yeah. And yeah. they yeah. they ended up having a lot of also like one of them I can't remember which one has had end up with anorexia and stuff like that there and they just got out of it all together so it was the best they've got done what they need to do they got their money and they left it at their peak so you know it was the best thing for them and all the credit to them for doing it you know getting out while they could I mean work, working from your six months old so hardly yeah. you know 
at least they can get a life and have a, not get a life that sounds so harsh at least now they can go and have a life you know with what they've earned they can have a life and enjoy it because they've gone into like different areas it was fashion and things wasn't it and other stuff that they made a, yeah. a mint from basically yeah. yeah someone had said it was oprah's interview with the olsen twins that sort of made them stop and look and go we don't need this anymore because they started to ask uh, and what weight are you and oprah actually asked one of the girls who's literally just like out of hospital with anorexia and um, what weight are you now you don't fucking ask that question of anybody. No. Bitch, you don't do that. Oprah or not, you don't ask that question. And you can see the uncomfort on their faces. And I think not long after that, they sort of disappeared from the public eye, which was the best thing for their health, I'm sure. Look at me sounding like I know them, but it, that's how I would feel. it. <laughs> that's how it came across to me as if I was a fan. Mm-hmm. And to me, that came across very much so. I mean, I went into it with, as I said, not great knowledge of the, the characters, but... I don't want to be happy or angry that I now have the ultimate earworm that will never, ever, ever leave me, which is the Agatha All Along song. I mean, that, just the whole setup for me of seeing that, that she sort of like had her hand in a lot of the things that were happening. For me, it was a great thing because it was a real shock because I just was interested in the character and like the cool part where she was sort of saying to Vision, am I dead? And she's going, no, no, no. And she's going, well, why would you think that? And she was because you're dead. Because that sort of stuff was like really got me. I was like, wow, this is like some kind of like creepy. I mean, I vision was dead, but I'm like, this is creepy shit. I like this. This is, <laughs> this, yeah. is this is mm-hmm. interesting because none of the other people seemed to really know what was going on around them. And I'm gonna, th- uh, you know, I'm gonna say it now, throwing my my view with with Wanda. So all these people are trapped in this sort of world that Wanda has created. And occasionally, if they're released from it by vision at this point, they would know that they're trapped. So partly is obviously has sympathy because Wanda has PTSD and problems and she's created this world. But partly also looks at Wanda as a villain because she has taken all these people purely for her own benefit to create this world. And yet, you know, jumping ahead at the end of it, she's sort of trying to say, I was trying to protect you people. But really, that's the interesting point. To me, she does not come out of this as, you know, this selfless, brilliant person. She comes to, comes out of it as very much a very self-centered, very dangerous. Clearly, we see that person. Mm. And this is where I'm probably going to be hated by a lot of people. I kind of find myself, you know, siding with sword a bit because you couldn't have somebody with all this unchecked power just doing all this stuff. You know, you could see that someone's going to have to do something to, to keep this in check, to deal with it. Yeah, because I also remember that during the last episode, I think that Agatha actually does turn around and say, you know, like the reference is the fact that she's a villain. Was it her mm. or was there another character that did it? She's all the witches at Salem around her at the end said something like you're gonna oh there's like a quote they say like she's gonna destroy things she's a great destroyer she's something like give all sorts of ominous yeah feelings to being the scar that scarlet witch is not something positive the scarlet witch is something that is not good it's not gonna it's not you're not gonna be a bringer of fortunes you're gonna bring destruction kind of you know it made her seem very like okay she can't control what's gonna because obviously it's gonna happen but it was just how they called her out on it. Yeah, I think it also might have been um, Monica Rambo as well that said, you're not a villain in this. She sort of understood that it was her sorrow that had made it happen and and whatnot. But again, the villain was referenced. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, James. I don't fully agree, you know, because I think it was almost like a split split down the middle. Like she's a villain, but mm-hmm. she's trying to do good, but she's also being selfish with it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. It's like Professor X next, and he done good by blocking out Jean Grey's powers, but then the bitch snapped because he got out her powers, and he caused a whole pile of chaos. So I think it's pretty true to human nature. Everyone can be a villain in someone's yeah. story. What mm-hmm. is it? You'd be a villain in someone's story. So Wanda used to be a Hydra. No, she wasn't a Hydra agent, but she used to work for Hydra before she joined the Avengers. Yeah. So she did come from that background of things. So I don't. I, I genuinely don't think she has badness like she's no bad heart it's like probably like Jean Grey in a way she had all this power that was unchecked I think she would probably be the Marvel unit like the Marvel equal if you think of it in a way where Jean Grey had all this power unchecked could bloody do anything and everything but it was a really dark side to her unless it was controlled I think Wanda has the same characteristics in that sense where she has all this power and if it went unchecked or uncontrolled or untrained even it could mm. cause a lot of destruction so 
I find that quite interesting in how they're both of the maroon colored character in that they're both like able to fly in the way they do. They're both able to control minds in the way they do. I think and it's actually the first time I've caught on to that link between her and Jean Grey just by you saying about her being the villain, James. So it's, it's, I think that's quite an interesting way of looking at it as well. It's just, I think if she was trained properly, like she's a puppy, for God's sake, if she's trained properly, she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but she she did, in some ways, she did need to have a form of training to work and yeah. as she use her powers, but she was trained by a negative source, wasn't she? Yeah. So, and I mean, she also didn't mean to attract all the powers of the Mind Stone. She did not mean that. I mean, that's the thing. Was Wanda always like, you know, Harry Potter has all his horcruxes. <laughs> is Wanda like a fucking a horcrux of the Mind Stone? Was she the Mind Stone all along? Is that why she could recreate vision? Mm. Ooh, see? Where I was a bit confused is, obviously, you had the part where, as we're getting close to the end of the, the series, that, you know, uh, Agatha's showing her. She's getting to, to go into a mind to go through a past to remember things. I mean, that was tugging at the heartstrings scene where she's a child and you see where her interest uh, on the TV shows has come from because her family's getting bombed out in the middle of a war with Stark Industries weaponry. And then you see when she's she's got older and she's been held hostage by the people who are trying to get her to use her powers. Now, I was trying to work out, were the powers inside her all along or were the powers from the stone? No, I think the powers were inside her all along. And I think... Agatha alluded to that in the fact that how did that bomb not kill you? And she mm-hmm. was like, oh, it was a dud. It was a dud. But we could all see watching it. It wasn't. It was flashing. It was it was working. Like, the, how were you not killed in this instant? How were you not? And the Scarlet Witch is born a witch. And I think this is where she was trying to make her remember. This is why you were saved. You were saved because you have this power and you clearly didn't realize at the time because you just thought you got really lucky, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think like Hydra maybe find that out sort of realize how the hell did this child not how did this child survive this shit you know interesting because if you think about it they said i think hydra said during that scene something like um all the other ones have died you did episode. yes and you're right so yeah were they just were they just testing random survivors to see because they knew maybe there could have been this power somewhere because obviously they knew about the tesseract and all that stuff so they knew all these things were there the hydra guys and sword and all they knew about so they were like maybe there's some untapped power somewhere and as they tested, as they went along, others died. And then they came across Wanda, who they didn't even see what happened to her with the Mind Stone. On their recording, they just saw her walk in. They saw her collapse. Yeah, that's survive, true. But they didn't see any of the other stuff. She saw it. And when she saw it, that's when she saw the vision of the Scarlet Witch in, in the... I don't know if you've seen that clear enough, because like, I had to watch it yeah, the yeah. second to figure it out. You see yeah. the Scarlet Witch in that figure of the yellow light. So I think that's where she should have realized what or who was in her future. I think that's where Agatha was trying to get her to remember that. You have this power, but it became so supreme once you, like the Mind Stone absorbed into you, once you saw that, that's when you became the Scarlet Witch. You might have been a normal house to house, everyday Salem witch, mutant, whatever you want to call yourself. You were a mutant. There was something with you. You were phenomenal. You had these powers, but this stone saw that power and then went into you. And that's what made you go, boom, Scarlet Witch. Hmm. I think. Bit of a weird one, but yeah. That's what I think, anyway. <laughs> Still doesn't explain the sliding accent, though. <laughs> Don't even. Do you know, no way Sarkovia is not a real place. <laughs> no way Sarkovia is like a totally made up place in the world. People have bitched that. Why didn't they use a real Sarkovian actress? <laughs> Shit you not. Shit you not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How do you? I mean, did they use a real alien for the scroll at the end? Did they use a real authentic scroll at the end? Did they? I think maybe maybe they did. I don't know. <gasps> There's something to discuss. Was it a real scroll? I mean, you know, but honest to God, people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are they can about the fact that Wakanda isn't real? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> what? James, don't do this to me. Yeah. Wakanda forever. Yep. You need to take a moment there for Chad for Chadwick though. There, you really do. Yeah. Absolute yep. man made that place legendary and amazing and real, like totally a legend. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree with that. And yeah. the fact that he carried on, that nobody knew he was yeah. ill. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing what he uh, did. You've got to take your hat off to him. You yeah. really do. Absolutely. He made Wakanda real. So for purposes of Marvel, it's feckin' real. For us fans out there, it's damn well real. But don't get bitchy because there's not a real Wakanda. Wakanda and in, in Wakanda. <laughs> I don't know what Wakanda and I don't know. in On the throne. Do you know what I mean? Uh, shh. 
don't make it out that there's a, there's not a real Sokovian in the role in the in the role of a non real country person. Ugh, don't even. I'm just gonna say hail Hydra. <laughs> I was gonna say quickly note to self, James. Don't ever say anything like that again. <laughs> yeah, I've learned. I've learned. You know, I've got more women who will gang up on me on this podcast. So yeah, I'm just staying quiet. You'll lose. You'll lose every time. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, I kind of worked that one out. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry we'll have graham soon <laughs> yeah, hopefully he will stick up with me or fall be at least no he's he's too smart he'll side with you lot <laughs> yeah he will <laughs> james if i agree with you i will side with you 100 percent. but at the minute you're just wrong with a lot of things so it's yeah well i'll yeah i'll try and be right at some point eh? you know <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say as well but to be honest I do tend to side with you most of the time, so I am kind of like your male friend. <laughs> yeah. Who's the next comment from? The next one is from my best mate, who also has strange sexual relations with bicycles, but, you know, whatever floats his boat. <laughs> is my best pal, Jamie Westwood. Way! But, yeah. <laughs> How are we doing, pal? So he's put, I thought this show was like a piece of art that needs to be framed. I know a lot of people didn't like the first two or three episodes as it was building Wonders Universe and people wanted action and usual Marvel stuff. I'd heard that as well. Actually, a few people complained it was a bit of a slow burner. And he's put, but I loved it because he knew it was going to lead somewhere. Obviously, there were so many fan theories about how it was going to play out with characters like Mephisto, etc. coming into it. But I'm so glad that it wasn't that and it was what it was because this show needed to focus on Wanda and be about her and how she had dealt with so much heartbreak and not be about exciting new characters and cameos. The quicks of the thing, he's put, I'm not 100% convinced, is real, that he's just an actor because he knew more than Agatha should have known about her past. That's a very good point, actually. So I do believe he's from the multiverse. But again, I'm so happy it's not elaborated on uh, in this show because A, this needs to be about Wanda and Pietro. And B, it gives us something to ponder upon, especially when you know the next film we see her in will be about the multiverse. And with the recent announcement about the mutants, you put, anyway, I'm waffling on. This show was stunning. Olsen deserves every award for that performance. I agree with that definitely true so many different types of acting it was nothing but impressive and any comic book program that has a finale that makes people including my wife cry shows how damn good it is plus how amazing was a scout witch costume at the end oh Very, yeah that was incredibly impressive that really did impress me that was a cool costume it was pretty cool seeing the weird red halloween one it yeah. gave you an impression yeah. how awful some of these things will probably look in real life. <laughs> but I, I like them because as soon as she walked out, that was just comic book and then comic book vision and then comic book Quicksilver walked out in his costume too and the boys came out in their comic book costumes and it was all linked to the comic book. There's actually one scene which is how beautifully linked to the comic it was. I think it was on the episode where Wanda was giving birth or something like that there her and vision are in the living room and rain's about to happen and they so she sort of like raises her hands above her head in a really weird and obscure kind of way it just doesn't look natural and vision's right beside her doing some really obscure pose whatever way it is it poses hell for like a second and it's a blink and you miss it but in their first comic together the cover that's the pose they pull ah so they they done quite a bit the nod to the comics which i thought was amazing very very well done they didn't keep it all in the cinematic history mm-hmm. that we know they drew from the comics, which expands the universe as well for everyone, which is going to make it bigger than just what we already, if you've never seen a comic, than just what we know. So with regards to the comics, were the comics actually called Wonder Vision? No, called- no. I can't mind. I think some of them were like X, some of them were in X-Men. It's like literally, it's just, I can't even remember what the heck they were called like, but because I didn't read them much, if you know what I mean. It was just, as you grow up, you look at them. It's like having the bounty book back in the day. You know, you have them and you just yeah. don't pay much attention to what the flipping are. But um, I know because there's so many, I always got lost when they appeared in X-Men. I was like, then do I need to start watching the, do I need to start reading the X-Men ones? And then they would appear in a Marvel one. You're like, is it them ones or is it a Wanda one on its own? They're in so many different universes that it, it would get you lost. And like you said, in a fucking like, really expensive wormhole. Yeah. So, yeah, they're all over the place. Like, I mean, but it's really, really good. Like, And can I ask a question? Is uh, someone who doesn't really know. So Vision obviously looks like he's kind of cool, you know, 
purple colour scheme. Does he ever go normal human look in the comic? Oh God, I can't mind. I don't think I was one of the ones. If he was ever normal human, I'd have skipped past until the action. <laughs> right. The pictures, like I, I'll not lie and say I read every word. Looked every as long as there was a bit of action. Ooh, ah, oh, ooh, that was my my go to when it came to it. Like it was, I'm like one of them skim readers. I'm skim comic. I love wow. for the bits that pop out. Yeah, yeah. I'll go to the pow, pop, bam, wham, all that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was this this show was a lot similar for Paul Bettany because he said it just got him work again because <laughs> he didn't think yeah. he'd have any any work to do after being in Marvel. I mean, it must be a very strange thing because he not really done anything. Well, neither Elizabeth you know, Olsen done anything sort of comic book related. But the more you look at all the people that cast in Marvel, other than Chris Evans, you have nobody who'd actually really got any prior comic book heritage that I can really think of. Not comic book. I mean, you've no, mm. no comic book heritage, no. And if someone had turned around to you and said, we're going to cast, you know, reformed alcoholic drug addict Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> in a film, you'd be like, are you mad? <laughs> are you yeah. insane, this guy? <laughs> yeah. And then, like, what happened? He's like a legend. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was just thinking um, Ryan Reynolds, I suppose, is the only exception to that, what you just said. Because he <laughs> did play Green Hornet as well as Deadpool, didn't he? Green I know Green Ho- Oh, sorry, Green Lantern. Um, I know that Green Lantern is kind of very frowned upon, but he yes, did- even Ryan Reynolds hates it. He's like, it's the worst thing to come out of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the end of uh, Deadpool two. Don't worry. <laughs> I did watch the Green Lantern, and I've got to be honest, it was painfully bad, painfully bad. Uh, and I'll watch most things, but that was a really bad film. I- Felt rather sorry for him because for a while with him they were looking at casting him in loads of different superhero stuff. Like I think they wanted him at one stage they mentioned him for the Flash at one point. I mean obviously he did play Deadpool before he played Deadpool in the Deadpool films in the yeah. wonderful cinematic Wolverine. masterpiece that was Wolverine. Dear yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was hoping he'd show up. It, what a mind fuck that would have been if Hugh Jackman had shown up in uh, One Division. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> even if he'd done a small cameo like he did in like the younger X Men, where you see Patrick Stewart and and Patrick Stewart, oh God, James, what do you call him? James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. They go into a bar and they go to Wolverine and they literally see yeah. Hugh Jackman sitting there. He just tells them to fuck off, gives them the thing, whatever yeah. he does, and that's it. That's his entire blip for the film. But it was something the fans love to see. I mean, I know my heart skipped yeah. here. Like, oh! It just would have been brilliant to see Hugh Jackman in it or any any of the other ones. Not as a joke, not as a punchline, yeah. but as a nod to the universe. I suppose the only episode they could have done that in would have been the Halloween episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I would not thought of that. Yeah. Have someone dressed up as him. Yeah. Yeah. Or just, it could have been just a kid running by as an X-Man costume, something. Something so silly would have been just... Well, do you know what? I might actually have to watch it again. There might have been. Yeah, you never know. I don't recall it, though. Who's next, James? Daniel Myers has put an interesting one, which is, because of Evan Peters appearing and the upcoming Multiverse of Madness, I thought Wanda was going to rip the fabric of time and space with a grief fueled hex. Mm. That would have been something. It would have validated James's assumption that she is a villain. Mm. Daniel's also put some hell out, which is which would have led to the old Fox and Spider-Man movies crossing over with the MCU. Uh, yeah. Also, yes, uh, I thought Mephisto was behind Ralph. it all, and Ralph was going to be him. Yeah, yeah. I think the link to Spider-Man because there's that new film coming, uh, whatever the hell it's called, because I know they've dropped so many names, and I totally forgot what the real one was now. Nick Fury deals with Spider-Man quite a lot, and. I think there's a part of one of, where you see him in one of the trailers of the upcoming shows where he is on, he is up in space and it's the Skrull spaceship that he is on at that point in time. And then you have at the end of one division in the mid credit scene, you have a, sw- a sword agent turning into a Skrull and they're telling Monica Rambo that, you know, you have an old friend wanting to talk to you. They want to talk to you up in space. Is it going to be Nick Fury, which will then bring Monica into the Spider-Man film? Ooh, maybe. And I think I'd read somewhere that what if Monica's mother obviously created S.W.O.R.D. And whenever Captain Marvel, Carl Danvers, went and found a new world for the Skrull species to live on, because obviously their universe was destroyed or whatever, a, a theory is that a lot of the S.W.O.R.D. agents are actually Skrull, and they're, ah, there to, they're there to actually look after S.W.O.R.D., which is Maria's legacy. 
That oh, would make wow. sense. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a nice one. But another thing with the scrolls as well is if whenever they were writing, Wu was writing on the whiteboard about who could be causing this before they realized it was Wanda. If you look mm-hmm. at the left side of the board, they actually have scroll as a suspect because they were people who could manipulate universes. Ah. See, yeah. I, I feel as though there's a lot of things that I've missed only because I didn't actually read the comics or have the background, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I think another nod to the scrolls was and I'll have to look at my notes on this one. It was, you know, the part where at the end, Jimmy Wu, he's lying behind like something hiding and he, he calls Cliff. Well, apparently back in one of the comics, the 1968 comics, uh, Nick Fury, <laughs> agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Mm. There's the story about the alien race. He infiltrated the planet and there was one of the aliens was called Cliff, a shape-shifting character who worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. and has a connection to Nick Fury. Ah. That's a deep dive. Deep, deep isn't dive. It, isn't it just? <laughs> like, I mean, but it's really, uh, I thought it was, I loved looking about the scrolls and stuff like that there because Nick, Nick Fury does have a good connection to them and it's funny how he's the one who recruited Iron Man and is, is he now calling up Monica Rambeau to be the next Captain Marvel? kind of thing mm, maybe could be interesting maybe. if that's the, the 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 way they do it yeah <laughs> i think yeah i think that's a lot of good theories because it's quite handy having you on the podcast to be honest uh gabrielle because you know you're you're sort of looking at, at it from knowledge of like the comic books as well you know and um whereas me and james are kind of watching it with smaller background knowledge kind of thing really and um well, i but, don't you know, just for purpose of the re- listeners i don't know a lot about the comics so please don't beat me down listeners for uh not maybe not being totally on it but i love to i love to look into it and read into it and find out where yeah. all the Black stories are so that so please don't berate me, people, if I'm wrong in anything. <laughs> oh, they I mean, wouldn't. I, I, they wouldn't anyway. I, I, I watched it because there was nothing on TV. <laughs> Ash, you enjoyed it. I did. I did. I, yeah. I was confused. This was evident in an in, in earlier uh, conversation we had about it. I was confused by it, but I did find it very enjoyable. I just love like the diving scene, how each sort of different version uh, and genre of television was was shown, yeah. and it did it. It, it well, I just sit and think of the first episode where it just amused me. And I suspect one thing that's helped with with this show because everybody's stuck in lockdown because of COVID. And if you're a fan of the Marvel product, you're going to hopefully have enjoyed it anyway, more than likely will have done. But also, it's a bit of like a it's a comforting thing to see all these different genres of TV that you could see. So I think that's probably another level where people have enjoyed it and got into it. I like that you said that. It's bringing back the nostalgia and the comfort levels. You probably did catch it, but did you see the Wizard of Oz reference in the very final when there was the fight between Wanda and Agatha? You know, Agatha gets blasted through the window. She's obviously the witch and you just see her boots like sticking the shoes. out. Like that. <laughs> ah, yeah, now, that's a yeah. funny bit, right? So that's You automatically go, oh Christ, Wizard of Oz, right? You think nothing about it. But in the end scene, you know, when this it's all gone back to normal and that theatre always, ch- the movie title always changes throughout each mm-hmm. generation of the TV. In the very last one, it was it was reflecting Oz, the Great and Powerful, the 2013 film, which was directed by the same director who's a comic book genius who done the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Ah. So it, was, it was almost like a little that. tip of the hat to that side of the nostalgia thing. So. Mm. I like it. Again, very random, but... <laughs> hey, random is good. Random is good. It absolutely is. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely... Like, I'm I'm quite looking forward to actually, once we finish this, watching them back again with all these little snippets mm. that you've sort of provided, Gabrielle. And, uh, you know, like, and think, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. That's what it is. You know, that's that, 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 you know, whatever. But I know that the big thing that I found, uh, that I noticed during the first episode, you know, when the boss and Mr. Hart and Mrs. Hart had come round for uh, their dinner, dinner and they had breakfast. <laughs> it was when Mrs. Hart was going, stop it. And then she was sort of, you know, like it was yeah. at first, it was kind of like, a, oh, stop it. You know, stop being silly. Stop it. Stop being silly kind of thing. But then you saw her looking at Wanda with tears mm. almost forming in her eyes going, you know, almost in the sense of, please stop it. You know, this is my husband, you're killing him kind of thing. And then that's when she gives the permission to um, vision to sort of help him. It was just that scene because it was almost like she broke character, but she didn't break character. You know, it was the first 
first, I suppose, indication that it was Wonder who was controlling everything. But I didn't notice it again until we were doing this review thing. See, yeah. I didn't see it like that. That scene, if I'm honest, the first time I watched it, I saw it as this guy's choking. And it's almost like she's trying to get, because they're obviously Wanda and Vision in this stage of the show. They're trying to hide their powers. Yeah, And it's almost like she was trying to will Wanda to use her powers. It's like someone was testing. Like, no way, Agatha, ultimately, and I'm just thinking about this now, Agatha did want to test her powers and see where she went with it. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, okay, her husband's dying. She's going to stop it. Stop it. Like, you can do it. Will you just use your damn powers already? Not stop controlling me because she's in a couple more episodes, totally chill, and there's nothing really with her. Mm. But to me, just how I saw it was more... Want will you just use your damn power? Show us you let us see what can be done here. Like you can physically stop this moment in time, not the whole situation. Because at that point we didn't really know it was a it was a TV show. We just thought it was a random thing by the creators of Marvel who were trying to show a one the nineteen sixties TV show. We didn't even know there was gonna be color at this point. So that's how I saw it, if you know what I mean. It was like someone's testing Wanda and her powers and like show yeah. us just show us what you can damn well do here woman that's why i took it anyway yeah no, that's a good theory as well because yeah i don't know if i quite made myself clear as to what i meant but you know just in case it was the fact that you know not, not the fact that she uh, mrs hart was wanting her to sort of release her control over the you know situation but it was like almost take con- a further control and get yeah. her husband to help her to help him so yeah. You know, not so. die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. But I still love their hello and goodbye, though, you know. Guess who? <laughs> the answer from the ice. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> the person behind you is leaving now. Yeah. <laughs> That's too cute. I just found it strange that we never saw him again. He's a bit of a lost opportunity. Yeah, unless because he nearly died, he decided that he didn't want to be any, you know, like there was a part of him that was sort of like, I just don't want to be anywhere near them. You know, if I can try and avoid being near them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's possible. It's just that you saw no, no other iteration of him. But yeah, yeah, interesting. There's going to be a Google theory somewhere. There's going to be a theory somewhere of where he is. There has to be. Yeah. I have oh, to find killed- I'm going to find, find that afterwards. <laughs> oh, she killed him. <laughs> maybe I guess I killed him. Maybe he was, maybe he was actually Ralph before Ralph was Ralph. <gasps> oh, Ralph. It was kind of annoying in a way that we never found out who Ralph was. We did. Ralph was Ralph was Pietro. Pietro was Ralph. At the end, Ralph was Ralph Boner. Ralph Boner. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. That's because yeah. technically he was the owner of Agatha was in his house. He was the owner because I think it was, um, oh, what do you call her? Rambo, she found like the address and it was a letter that was to this guy, Ralph Boner. <laughs> Who oh, lived in the house that Agatha lived in? So where Agatha's talking about, oh my husband Ralph, 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 Ralph. She's she's talking about someone who's actually living at the house with her, but someone who is obviously not her husband at the time. But you know, just, do you know what I mean? So she was really, yeah. Ralph was that was sort of ex- divulged or exposed in the last episode where it came out where his he was Ralph. He was the Ralph from Agatha's house that she always spoke ah. about. See, I didn't. Yeah, my brain didn't connect the two at all because I was expecting Ralph to be like an older man. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why it was so annoying for people when it came out that Pietro was not even Quicksilver. He was this guy, Ralph, who was a double prisoner, I suppose, prisoner of Wanda's world. And then Agatha was controlling him, too. So the poor bugger just got really double whammed. Uh, so he didn't know what way was up. Yeah, no, he was Ralph Boner. So he was I think he was the Ralph that Agatha always spoke about. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, it does make sense now. I always just wonder, what do you think happened? Because obviously in the final episode, the people are released and, you know, this is like a thing where clearly they all hate Wanda. The, the point made to is, uh, is it Monica says to them, they'll never know what you gave up for them. Yeah. What do you reckon happened to them all? I think, to me, I think they went back to their normal lives. To me, I think, I'm hoping Agatha was arrested because obviously being that Wanda aired everything, that S.W.O.R.D. will then realise she is a danger, so they will then take her out of the she will be taken out of that equation and where she goes from there god knows but i think they'll all just gone back to their normal lives because she didn't take them out of their home she didn't take them out of their Mm. town they were all there already living their day-to-day life she just in her words she thought she was protecting them from the outside world so i think they just went back to normal if that's what i would think anyway unless sword came in and they did like a um, men in black kind of situation (laughs) where they all said look at this light 
and then it all erased yeah. everything that had just happened. I, I think they'd be more likely to do a clean sweep if you catch my drift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bomb, yeah. <laughs> With Agatha, though, do you think if they take her into custody, is, she's not going to be Agatha, though? Won't she just be this, like, zoned out person who thinks <laughs> she's the neighbour? <laughs> Who gives a shit? They will keep her under lock and key in case she lifts that because Wanda had her under mind control, yes, but then how far does Wanda's control go? Mm. Maybe whenever she's out of the way, that that spell lifts. You know, was it a permanent thing? Because if it was a permanent thing, then everybody there wouldn't have needed the hex surrounding them. They would just be controlled by her. So once the hex was gone... You know, because like you'll always be the nosy neighbor, but then the nosy neighbor has nowhere to fucking live because that's Ralph's house. <laughs> Where's she going? She technically homeless right now. You know, she just sticks her in the empty lot. Yeah, just you know, <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> her agatha has just been lifted as a shell of herself. Yeah, I think with her because it's like you were saying about prison. Uh, you know, going to prison and you know being sort of held at sword and stuff i keep wanting to say sword so if you hear me pause sword. that's why yeah sword <laughs> but um yeah it, even if they're not holding her she's still if it is a permanent thing she is kind of imprisoned anyway isn't she because she is imprisoned in this nosy neighbor type thing that yeah. she formed herself i know but it's kind of like if that's the life that she's got to continue living then that's her form of prison as well, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. But then I suppose if I don't know how good this is with actual theories or whatever, but the links are she has to Mephisto because in her little cave that she had her little underground room, obviously there's a lot of purple because purple's her color. But on a lot of the columns, there was the devil. There was like a mm-hmm. lot of carvings of the devil, which a lot of people linked to Mephisto. Mm. And then there was the fly, you know, in the episode where Wanda eventually finds out that Agatha. You see, the, there's a really random close-up of mm-hmm. a really big, big bug. Mephisto, his first appearance, I think, in the comic, as he, he appears as uh, a bug. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's his first appearance or there's a really significant part where he appears as this this fly, this big bug. It was just, I think what'll happen, I, th- I can see there being a bit of a, like a duo going on there where he'll, she'll summon, I don't know, summon her dark arts or some bloody random shit that she'd done in Salem before she got, you know, yeah. pew-pew by all her ancestors. There'll be something there that'll free her, I think, because they can't, they can't create such a brilliant villain and then mm. leave her at that. They just cannot do it, you know, because she's so big in the comics, so they can't leave her as, you know, that. It would just be pointless. To me, I get very feminist on it and be like, again, they'll screw over a female villain. Oh, look, she got this here and then she just got trapped in her own mind and then that's her away with it. You know, we give her a little courtesy, you know, reveal, but then we'll just get rid of it to allow for all the other ones going on. Mm. But that's me. That's me and my I, thoughts on that. <laughs> I think, you know, it's sort of going by typical Marvel. They tend to leave things, but then they'll come back to it in a future film episode, whatever. In like, 10 years time, in 10 years time, there'll be a film coming in. <laughs> Yeah, Agatha will have her stereotypical white hair, uh, a little, you know, she'll have gone white hair in prison or something like that there. What we haven't touched on is probably the most important part of the show, which is Sparky. He deserved it. Yeah, I think he did. I think he had it coming. Uh, I think his death (laughs) is, you know, for these people who got emotionally upset about it, you know, you're going to have to just deal with it. Sparky's death was required to move the story forward. Was he ever oh, there? Well, the that's place? true. Actually, yeah, that is a good point because you have to ask yourself about the validity of the reality of the actual of certain characters. So does Sparky exist in any form? Did the kids exist in any form, really? Or was this all just part of her brain? No, I mean, well, from that side of Wanda, but I think more Agatha. I think Agatha had the oh, Sparky right. thing. And I, to me, that was, that was just all Agatha. She might have killed Sparky, but I think she also, because even Wanda looked shocked by the pup whenever she first walked in. And if it was her controlling it, it would sort of be, there There wouldn't be that element of total shock. If mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas Agatha then walks in with a, look what I have. I have the, you know, I have the doggy key. I seen someone needed this. You know, I think it was Agatha done it to get them attached to then make them aware of death, which would then yeah. bring the other aspects of Pietro and her daddy and, and or vision and stuff. Also, it teaches them the lesson that not to grow up again as well, because she says, "No, don't grow up. Oh, yeah. You need mm-hmm. to learn. You need to learn and feel this pain. 
you know, yep. kind of thing. But also, yeah, you're quite right with regards to the fact that he, she came in because Vision came into the room, didn't he, as the human version of him? Because mm-hmm. he was like, I expect somebody. I have a feeling that somebody's going to be walking through the door. And then he also makes reference to the fact that, well, I'm going to say Agatha, but it was Agnes at the time, had the exact thing that they actually needed. Yeah, and they made they also then decided that the kids had to be ten to have a pet, and they, you know, in front of Agnes, yeah. just went, <laughs> you know, mm. <laughs> so that's true. Like it was Agatha just poking Wanda to get her to use her powers the whole time. Like even from like your woman at the dinner table, it's I think it's been Agatha. It has been Agatha all along <laughs> poking yeah. Wanda to see because she admitted it herself. I wanted to see what you can do. I've wanted to see what you can. Do, but you're that demented that you actually believe that this was your brother when you knew it wasn't every part of your yeah. body knew it wasn't but you doubted yourself so much but you know this i was testing all of your powers the whole time so yeah. you look at it that way how much of it was wanda controlling and how much of it was agatha doing the shit turn hmm. yeah that's an interesting way of looking at it actually i've not really thought of that one and while we're on the subject of animals as well what about senior scratchy the wabbit <laughs> The rabbit. Ah, Senior Scratch. Do you want me to get you on that one as well? Yes, certainly. Because it seemed very bizarre. You know, in, this is from my naive eyes now. But obviously, you know, it was quite a main feature. But then it seemed quite bizarre at the end that he ate the bird or the fly or whatever it was. I, I can't remember which version it was. I think it was the bird at that point. Yep. But yeah. The story with that is Agatha Harkness' son is called Nicholas Scratch. Ah. And he is a villain. He is a villain, I believe, in Doctor Strange. Okay. Interesting. See? Well, it's also a thing. Oh. People get all kicked up because Sabrina, yeah. the Chilling Adventures, has a, a guy in it who's a demonic, he's a demon called Nicholas Scratch. So everyone was like, oh my God, is there going to be an even bigger cross? You know, it's like, no, no, this Nicholas Scratch was about way before this was. So yeah. your kicks. And this is, so that I think is pretty much where Nicholas Scratch is. He's still a bad guy. And that's her way of, I'm not going to bring my son into this, but I'm going to have him here in some way. She shouldn't have a rabbit, as I understand that she has a cat in the comic book continuity. I cannot mind. I just always remember when I heard the name Scratch, I was like, her son's called Scratch. I was like, ooh, ooh. She has like a cat that can do all this, as I understand it, can like become a giant and change into all manner of different things and attack people. So the, the rabbit, you know, changing, etc. I guess is some sort of nod to that. Could be. Mm. Yeah, I reckon you could be onto something there, James, because it just seemed bizarre that the rabbit at the bird at the end, do you know mm. what I mean? So again, yeah, naive yeah. eyes. Um, it's because obviously rabbits don't eat birds, you know, <laughs> but it was kind of the nature of the way he did it. It was kind of like almost that was a form of a, another magical being, you know. Well, don't worry, I got revenge because I had rabbit for dinner a few days ago. So. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I I just get hurt in my heart now when I hear anything about cats with all the Pepe Le Pew stuff. I mean, that just breaks my heart. I mean, he 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 what sexually harassed a cat for years and then like they've taken him away. So I just get all annoyed when I hear anything about a cat. <laughs> <laughs> a skunk and a cat, weird mix, but you know. Yeah, but let's just let's get rid of Pepe Le Pew. Like we'll get rid of Pepe Le Pew, but you know, it's fine that he can go and play. What is it? Someone says he can go and play Grand Theft Auto and set a hooker on fire for twenty dollars. <laughs> But, you know, heaven forbid he watches yeah. Pepe Le Pew <laughs> chase a cat. That's not a bad point. I can't disagree with that. But it's not about WandaVision, so let's no. move on. No. 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 <laughs> was there any episodes that you like really, really enjoyed? Or was there any episodes that you really didn't enjoy, let's say, first? I'm trying to think of the one, because there was one that I felt sort of dragged a little bit, and it was probably just before the... I can't put what the, the exact one was, but before we saw, uh, we found out that, you know, it, I, about Agatha, the one before I felt sort of dragged a bit. Generally, I felt there'd been quite a good run on things. It's probably made that big tonal shift between just doing the flashbacks to the, the sitcoms, etc., and it became its own thing. I felt there was just a bit of a shift and it kind of dragged, but it, again, it recovered and did fine and carried on with itself. So I had no major problem there. Episodes that I really enjoyed, I obviously loved the first one just because it really grabbed my attention and I thought, hey, this is something different. And I liked the way they worked with the final episode where everything was just going bonkers and they were fighting each other. So 
No, they were really good episodes. Um, dragging. I think the one, the one episode you're talking about, that's the one where is that where the they got turned into the circus tent at the end, wasn't it? That was like yeah that episode. Yeah, it was. I find that one a bit annoying. I mean, the the part where Darcy and Vision were driving back to Wanda's, it just annoyed that that the whole bit annoyed me because it was like, will you just hurry the feck up? You know, why are you waiting on the lady to cross the road, dude? You can fly. Like, why are you waiting on the electric to be fixed? Just fucking fly. You know. Mm. don't get me wrong I'm glad Darcy didn't get out of the truck because she was ultimately able to like you know plow it into your man at the end so she obviously eventually got past the roadblocks or she killed some kids on the way I don't know what she done but she eventually got on the way into the town but you know it just annoyed me that Vision didn't get there sooner but things have been different you know I wonder if because he was taking all of those signs as Wanda keeping him away yeah I think it was actually now that we've got the knowledge of it Agatha keeping him away so yeah. that she could get her to go down to the basement mm-hmm. to do all of the whatnot that they did, obviously, yeah. and control her and whatnot, because Vision thought that it was Wanda who was keeping her away, him away. He was probably being a, maybe a little bit pig-headed, sort of like, well, fine, if she doesn't want me to come home, then I'm not going to go home. Mm-hmm. But actually, on reflection, it probably wasn't her that didn't want him to come home. It was probably Agatha. Yeah, but yeah, I would see that as well. Um, I would agree with Vision, not in the way of being pig-headed, but I would how can I think of it more oh in an aw oh, sort of way. He's probably like, you know, if Wanda doesn't want me back, she doesn't want me back for a reason. So given that time, you know, give it that bit of benefit of the doubt rather than the stubborn side of it. Like give her the there's a reason. There is a reason she's doing this. Like there has to be a reason behind it. And then eventually obviously he lost his shit and he was like, No, I need to go. <laughs> this shit <laughs> no fuck this shit I'm away <gasps> it takes off one part we, we talk about episodes things we like we disliked I did like the part where it looked like Wanda and Vision were actually going to fight each other oh be a sort of flew up. I love that I would have loved to have seen them actually have a proper <laughs> all out battle but then this is the thing if Wanda killed him would she be killing herself given that she he is say, her technically fighting mm-hmm. herself that would be the ultimate mind fuck wouldn't it <laughs> wouldn't it just yeah <laughs> The other thing that I was going to say about was the, obviously, last episode, you know, we've talked about that an awful lot. But with regards to the last clip of it, you know, like Marvel, it was quite nice when Marvel, when they started doing the typical Marvel thing, you know, it was like halfway through. It was like, because I always fast forward anyway, because I always expect there to be that extra little snippet bit that they always do. It was a clip to Wanda being in a a a style retreat. (laughs) <laughs> yes, it was like a cabin in the woods kind of thing. And I'm wondering if that she's sort of thinking, well, maybe I could just set up home here because we're by the water. It's secluded. There's nothing mm-hmm. around me. So I'm not controlling or hurting anybody. But I could just bring Vision and the kids back to here. Well, maybe that's why mm. she's in astral form looking at the book. Yeah. I just I'm envision her chopping wood and building fires and making coffee. <laughs> Yeah. Making a real pot over a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever notice both Thanos and Agatha's evil villain colours are purple? Oh, yeah. No, but now that you mention it, that is interesting. Just, just popped into my head there. <laughs> just yeah. Random, random as shit there. <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah, because you know, I think, in a way, because we've kind of covered a lot of information about this, obviously, these uh, series. Is, series is, I always say that, and it's always like... Series is. <laughs> real word but it is now it's a gemerism another thing i do gemerism it is a gemerism yeah definitely <laughs> on this episode we've had a gemma dumb fuck up and uh, we've had a gemerism <laughs> so there we go <laughs> are we playing cod's wallet bingo then we should put all these little things on a bingo card for every episode how many can you get in spot <laughs> how many times do i apologize or do i say um you know what i mean yeah, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of sidetracked because I was going to say something about Edgerton and then that's um, not relevant to the podcast. So yeah, so we kind of get into the the end of this episode really now because obviously it's gone on quite a while. But with regards to this TV series, Obviously, something that James normally does, which is rate it out of five. But instead of it being five stars, I'm going to call it five fishes. So how many fishes would you give out of five, Gabrielle? i give it a four. Okay. Four. The only, the only reason it misses a five is just because it was a slow start. It was a slow burn. 
at the beginning. And if you're a Marvel fan, you're expecting that. Oh, mm. at the beginning. I think that's the only thing that let it down a wee bit is you go into Marvel expecting something. And when it doesn't give it, it just deflates it a little bit. It's almost like you need to encourage yourself to stay, to wait for the act. It's like waiting at the end of the cinema, you're waiting on the end scene. You, mm. you need to encourage yourself to stay to do it in the hopes that it will be there. You're obviously disappointed if it doesn't get better, but you're obviously over the moon when there is, you know, so that was the only reason to give it a four because it had a lot of nods to Doctor Strange. It had a lot of nods to the history of the comics. It had a lot of nods to the geeky costumes that they wore. It it just brought Agatha into a whole new light. It gave a good villain. Just very, four out of five for definite for me. Oh, brilliant. Because it's funny that you say about the first couple of episodes, I said this to you, James, before that, I actually really enjoyed those episodes because my imagination was working to actually try and work out what was actually going on. And then it was like when Sword came into play, which was halfway through the series, which I thought was a brave thing for them to do kind of thing. You know, like, you know, the fact that they brought it in halfway through rather than at the beginning, it sort of lost something a little bit for me because then it was kind of like, oh, there's my imagination's gone, you know. Mm. but. It was brilliant still because I really did enjoy everything about it, really. And it was nice, it was good to see all the research that was being done in the background, you know. Yeah, but I'd probably give it a four and a half, I think. Four and a half fishes. So I'm going to give it four fishes and a head. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, hmm, what would I give it? Um, I'd give it three and a half simply because I would have loved to have seen more of it. I would love to see how where it could have gone further with things. But I did enjoy it as a show, certainly, and I like the fact that it... I think I more probably... It sounds a strange way of enjoying it. I certainly enjoyed the sitcom elements of it. I enjoyed the fact that you were looking at the way somebody was dealing with terrible things that happened as well. The way, you know, Wanda's psyche was trying to protect itself from things. Uh, and I'll have to give it three and a half because that sudding song is constantly stuck in my head that yeah. won't go. But one question I want to ask both of you, uh, something I, I, the question I normally will ask on Celluloid Codswalp is, if you could do it differently to improve it, what would you do? So whoever wants to go first. Nothing. If I'm honest, nothing. Marvel do it and they do it right because where it was a slow burner in the beginning, which would be my only not it's not even a complaint because it, it was done so beautifully in that if you watched, if you knew to pay attention to the commercials, you would see there were Hydra links, you would see there were there was something there. But I think I think it threw everybody that it was black and white. It was so Dick Van Dyke that style of show that it made everybody go what the fuck instead of paying attention to what they were watching. And I think they were very 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 smart. In doing that, so you need to watch it the second time to go, oh, here, I missed that, I missed this, I missed this, because you're so thrown off by the fact all they need to do is add bloody subtitles. That they needed to make the first episode silent with subtitles underneath, and that would have been a whole different thing. You know, I think it was slow because of our generation and how we're not used to that sort of TV show, mm-hmm. being lack of color, but because they had the little bits of menace in it, it was perfectly done. I don't think I could change anything. Hmm. I lie more topless scenes of Evan Peters. I don't actually remember any topless scenes of Evan Peters, but you know. <laughs> That's what I mean. We need it more. We need it. Oh, any. you want right? You actually wanted inclusion, yeah. right? I'm with. Yeah. You. Right, I understand now. <laughs> now that Gabrielle has brought up about uh, Evan Peters, then you know, kind of, every, I echo everything she just said, basically. So no, I really, I really did enjoy this. I really enjoyed every single stage that it went through and mm-hmm. it was just interesting to watch and like and like Gabrielle said it kind of was the case that you missed it if the first time round, didn't you you mm-hmm. missed things the first time round, so you did need to go back and watch it and it was like maybe it even took a couple of times to watch it to go do you know what that's something different like like I said when it came to the reviewing it and I didn't even notice the the black lines down the screen you know mm-hmm. the attention but it went to four to three yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, and also like with Mrs. Hart when she was going, oh, please stop it, you know, kind of thing. She was yeah. like begging, begging with her eyes. Yeah, I really don't think that they needed to add anything myself. What about you, James? Do you think anything? Um, the only thing I would have liked to, to, I would have loved to see more of the Scarlet Witch as the Scarlet Witch because the costume was bitching. Just a, I think they missed a, a, as a homage in it was, I think it would have been great if they could have done a Three's Company episode 
where it would have been because you know three's company um is the uh where the guy's living with two women and i yes. just think that would have been quite interesting to see that it could have been agatha and <laughs> wonder living with vision would have just been a very interesting setup very awkward too i'm sure yeah but I think that could have been really quite funny. I would have loved to have just seen Paul Bentley falling over the couch gag that they used to always do at the start of uh, Three's yeah. Company. Because physically, he's a good comedian. You know, well, he does comedy well and physically does comedy well. So that could have been quite an interesting one. That was um, maybe something else that you kind of like triggered in, in my brain there. But, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, the TV programs or, you know, like mm. the shows that they were referencing there was a lot of them mm-hmm. that i actually didn't really know which ones they were yeah. referencing when you said three company uh, three's company i i didn't really know what you were talking about then to be honest but i kind of sort of know what you were talking about after what you've just said as well but then also they were american programs weren't they so not all of yeah. them came across yeah. on the or i may not have watched them all so that is probably the reason why i didn't get the references but you know i still enjoyed it i didn't I didn't need that to kind of watch. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it's. I think it's left it beautifully that you want the second season. Yes, you know, it's kind of like, oh, when is it going to be? You know, it's kind of like, but then we've got a lot to fill in. You know, <laughs> Disney yeah. has kept us, um, you know, topped up. So cause we've got Winter Soldier next, haven't we? Can't wait for that. Yeah, exactly. What was it? Um, it no, it's Falcon and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter it? Soldier. Yeah. yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and then Loki is after it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait for them. Loki was bonkers. Uh, <laughs> I just love Loki. He is just brilliant. I mean, yeah. like, he's a villain. Loki is not a villain. He's a misunderstood adopted <laughs> child who just really rebels. You know, he's a type. He's he's just a typical rebellious little person because he he's not he's not evil. Like he has a good heart. Yeah, but I think that about I think that about all villains anyway. I don't think they're all totally bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like it's like the whole is Deadpool a villain villain or is he a hero? Because he basically just does mm. anything for himself, really, doesn't he? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always go back to Deadpool because well, I love Deadpool. So, <laughs> and to be fair, when I watch Star Wars, I root for the Empire. So, yep, it's like, it's like an X Men. I kind of root for the Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. A little bit, setting. Yep. Yeah. James, you would be in trouble with the Brotherhood because you're the one who's all, oh, they need to keep their powers checked. They need to have someone to watch them. <laughs> That's you. You'd be in deep yeah. shit when it came to that. So, yeah, you're I'll you in be, trouble. I'll be dead in minutes. <laughs> It'd be over. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well. In that case, then, I think that we've been talking enough Sally Lloyd Codswallop this week. I've been Gemma. I've still been James. And I'm always Gabrielle. Woohoo! And that's been yeah. One Division Review. Woohoo! <laughs> Bye! Bye! Bye-bye! <laughs>